Chemists study transformations of matter, in other words, chemical reactions. In this presentation, I introduce chemical equations which express chemical reactions. I will focus on the meaning of the coefficients in chemical reactions and the concept of a balanced chemical reaction in terms of conservation of mass. Visualizing chemical reactions helps in understanding chemical equations. I start by providing a cartoon representation of the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. This reaction releases a great deal of energy, so much so that it was used in the space shuttle's main engine. Both hydrogen and oxygen are diatomic molecules. Drawing the oxygen diatomic and remembering it has a double bond. Drawing hydrogen with its single bond. At room temperature, both hydrogen and oxygen are gases. The molecules in these gases move freely through space, as I show here. In a mixture of gaseous hydrogen and oxygen, the molecules will frequently collide. It is during such collisions that they have the opportunity to react. Since they have a propensity to react, upon colliding with enough force, new bonds will be formed and existing bonds will be broken to form new chemical compounds. In this case, one molecule of hydrogen can react with oxygen to form one molecule of water. But there is an oxygen atom left over. This can in turn react with another molecule of hydrogen to form another molecule of water. Overall, we initially had one molecule of oxygen and two molecules of hydrogen. These reacted to form two water molecules, our final state. The initial compounds in a chemical reaction are called the reactants. The final compounds are called the products. A chemical equation writes the chemical formula for the reacting species on the left, then an arrow to indicate a reaction, and the chemical formula for the product species on the right. The chemical formula on each side are separated by plus symbols. The ratio in which molecules combined or are formed are given by numbers, called coefficients, before each chemical formula. One oxygen molecule, two hydrogen molecules, to form two water molecules. It is conventional to omit any one as a coefficient, so I will erase that. There are many ways to interpret the coefficients of a chemical equation. The simplest is as the number of molecules in a reaction involving molecular compounds. This is as we have been discussing. One molecule of O2 reacts with two molecules of H2 to form two molecules of water, H2O. More generally, the coefficients represent combining ratios. O2 and H2 combine in a 1 to 2 ratio to form H2O. Or, H2O is formed from H2 in a 2 to 2, which is equivalent to 1 to 1 ratio. Because it is the most general, it is best to think of the coefficients in terms of combining ratios. Remember, the 1 before the O2 is implied. Instead of reacting one molecule of O2 with two molecules of H2, we could have imagined reacting two molecules of oxygen with four molecules of hydrogen to yield four molecules of H2O, and writing the following chemical equation. From this, the combining ratio for O2 with H2 is 2 to 4, which is the same as before because the ratio 2 to 4 reduces to 1 to 2. One could write many different numbers of reacting molecules, and this is why it is best to think about the coefficients as the ratio of the numbers of species involved in the reaction. 
It is conventional to express the combining ratios, and hence coefficients of the chemical equation, in the simplest possible terms. Any common factors are removed by dividing them out in the same way one could simplify an algebraic equation. Factoring, one sees that all of the coefficients have a common factor of 2. Chemical equations can be treated much like algebraic equations in that multiplying or dividing all of the coefficients by a number leaves them unchanged. Dividing both sides by 2 cancels the common factor of 2 and leaves us with our original equation. None of the coefficients have a common factor other than 1. This is the conventional way of writing a chemical equation. It is also possible to consider non-integer coefficients. One could write for the following situation. Half a dozen O2 molecules react with one dozen H2 molecules to form one dozen water molecules. The equation 0.5O2 plus 1H2 goes to 1H2O. It is also not conventional to have non-integer coefficients. These can be cleared by multiplying by an integer. In this case, multiplying by 2 again returns us to our original equation. Although not the standard, non-integer coefficients are sometimes helpful in balancing chemical equations, as we will see later. To summarize a few points about coefficients, they should all be integers, and they should share no common factors. Appropriately multiplying or dividing by an integer converts non-standard chemical equations into their more standard forms. The coefficients of chemical equations are important because they indicate the relative numbers in which reactants combine or products are formed. Up until now, we have been talking about reactions involving molecules or covalent compounds. What do chemical equations mean with ionic compounds? The thermite reaction is one example, which is the reaction of iron oxide, Fe2O3, with aluminum to form elemental iron and aluminum oxide, Al2O3. This reaction is a mainstay of chemical demonstrations because it generates enough heat, often spectacularly so, to melt the iron product. It is also used to weld railroad tracks together. Here, the chemical formula is not the composition of a molecule. Ionic compounds such as iron oxide are made from the reaction of a metal with a nonmetal and can be thought of as consisting of a series of negatively and positively charged atoms called ions. The attraction between positive and negative ions holds the structure together, and this interaction is called an ionic bond. Nearly all ionic compounds are solids at room temperature. In these solids, there is not a small number of atoms held together into molecules. Rather, enormous numbers of atoms are all held together in a network that extends over the entire solid. For instance, the picture shown is the atomic level structure of iron oxide. The blue spheres are the iron cations, and the red spheres the oxygen anions. The structure is truncated in that only a section of ions are shown. In reality, the structure would extend over many more atoms in all directions. In structures such as this, we talk about formula units. In terms of composition, the formula unit expresses the smallest set of atoms that can be repeated to make up the structure. In iron oxide, there is a basic unit of three oxygens and two iron atoms, as I have circled. Two to three is the lowest whole number ratio expressing the elemental composition of the solid. The chemical formula Fe2O3 expresses this ratio. Hence, with ionic compounds, it is not appropriate to think about molecules, but a small chunk called the formula unit of the solid. The coefficients of a chemical equation then describe the combining ratios of these minimally small chunks. There is one additional bit of information that is often seen in chemical equations, an indication of the phase of the chemical compound. For instance, in the reaction of H2 with O2, the fact that both are gases is indicated with a parenthetical G. In the reaction of aluminum with iron oxide, the fact that they are solids is indicated with a parenthetical S. The product of the reaction of H2 and O2 might initially be water in the gas phase, 
But if we wait for the reaction to cool down, we will have liquid water at room temperature, which is indicated with a parenthetical L. Similarly, after the reaction between aluminum and iron oxide is allowed to cool, we will have solid iron and solid aluminum oxide. One final designation is AQ for aqueous. This is used to indicate a chemical compound dissolved in water. For instance, NaCl aqueous, or parenthetical AQ, means table salt dissolved in water. Chemical reactions need to be balanced. By that, I mean that they must not violate the law of conservation of mass. Mass cannot be created or destroyed during a chemical reaction. This also means that atoms cannot be created or destroyed as well. They simply recombine in different ways. The two equations we have dealt with so far have both been balanced. To see that, we simply count the number of atoms on each side. For example, the H2 and O2 reaction. Making a table of the number of atoms of each element in the reactants on the left and the products on the right. For oxygen atoms, there is one molecule of O2 on the reactant side for two atoms. There are two molecules of H2O on the product side for two times one equals two oxygen atoms. For hydrogen atoms, there are two molecules of H2 on the reactant side for two times two equal four atoms and two molecules of H2O on the reactant side, each with two atoms of hydrogen, for two times two, or four atoms. There is the same number of atoms of each element on the reactants and the product side. We say the reaction is balanced. The process of balancing a chemical equation is really just one of guess and check. Here are the steps. The first step is to write the unbalanced chemical equation, which requires you to identify the reactants and products and write their chemical formula if only given their names. The second step is to add integer coefficients to balance the number of atoms of each type of element on the reactant side with that on the product side. As I just mentioned, this often involves a series of guesses, but the following hints may help make it a little more systematic. Start with elements appearing in only one compound on each side. Polyatomic ions can be treated as one unit. And if you get stuck during the process of balancing a chemical equation, try doubling the coefficient of the most complicated compound. Once you think you have the equation balanced, check. Finally, make sure that you have reduced the coefficients to their lowest whole number values. In other words, divide out any common factors. Here is a couple of examples to illustrate how to balance chemical equations. First, write the chemical equation for the reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia. This is a very important chemical reaction because it is used in the commercial production of ammonia, and ammonia is a principal ingredient in fertilizer. Nitrogen and hydrogen are both elements that exist as diatomics, N2 and H2, and ammonia is NH3. The problem tells us that nitrogen and hydrogen are reacted to form ammonia. So the N2 and H2 are the reactants, and the NH3 is the product. Writing first the unbalanced chemical equation, N2 plus H2 goes to NH3. In this case, each element only appears in one compound on each side, so our hints provide no guidance on where to start. I notice that there are two atoms of nitrogen on the reactant side and only one on the product side. I can balance the nitrogen by adding a coefficient of 2 to the ammonia. This now gives us 2 times 3, or 6 atoms of hydrogen on the product side. To get 6 on the reactant side, I need to add a coefficient of 3 before the H2, so there are now 3 times 2, or 6 hydrogens as well. Remember that you cannot change the subscripts to balance a chemical equation. For instance, I can't write H subscript 6 to get 6 hydrogens on the reactant side. 
This would change the molecule from the diatomic H2 to a molecule that does not exist, H6. Proceeding to check. First, nitrogen. There is one molecule of N2 for 1 times 2, or 2 atoms of nitrogen on the reactants. There are two molecules of NH3 for 2 times 1, or 2 atoms of nitrogen on the products. Now hydrogen. There are three molecules of H2 for 3 times 2, or 6 atoms of hydrogen on the reactants. There are two molecules of NH3 for 2 times 3, or 6 atoms of hydrogen on the products. Both balance. There are no common factors in the coefficients other than one, so they are the smallest whole number values possible. A second example. Write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction of sulfuric acid with sodium hydroxide to form sodium sulfate. This is a neutralization reaction between an acid and a base which forms a salt and water. Sulfuric acid is the acid of the polyatomic anion sulfate, SO4-2-. As protons each have a single charge, the chemical formula is H2SO4 to balance the 2- charge on the sulfate ion. Hydroxide is the polyatomic anion OH-, and its charge is balanced by one sodium atom in sodium hydroxide, NaOH. Like hydrogen, sodium is a group 1 cation with most common charge, plus 1. Sodium sulfate is an ionic compound of the sulfate anion with two sodium atoms per sulfate for charge neutrality, or Na2SO4. And water, of course, is H2O. From the problem, we see that H2SO4 and NaOH are the reactants, and sodium sulfate and water are the products. Writing the unbalanced chemical equation, H2SO4 plus NaOH goes to Na2SO4 plus H2O. Both hydrogen and oxygen appear in more than one compound on the reactant side. So I will start with either sodium or sulfur. Choosing sodium, I see that the two sodium atoms in Na2SO4 can be balanced by adding a coefficient of 2 to NaOH. This balances the sodium. There is one polyatomic ion sulfate on each side, so these already balance. This leaves unaccounted for two H pluses from the sulfuric acid and two OH minuses from the sodium hydroxide on the reactant side. These can come together to form two water molecules, so we need a coefficient of two before the water on the product side. Checking. Hydrogen, one molecule H2SO4 times two hydrogens per molecule plus two formula units of NaOH times one hydrogen per formula unit equals four hydrogens on the reactant side. Two molecules of H2O times two hydrogens per molecule equals four hydrogens on the product side, so this checks. Oxygen. One molecule H2SO4 times four oxygens per molecule plus two formula units of sodium hydroxide times one oxygen per formula unit equals six. One formula unit sodium sulfate times four oxygens per formula unit plus two water molecules times one oxygen per water equals six. This also checks. Sulfur. One molecule H2SO4 times one sulfur per molecule equals one. One formula unit Na2SO4 times one sulfur per formula unit equals one. Check. Sodium. Two formula units of NaOH times one sodium per formula unit equals two. One formula unit of sodium sulfate times two sodium per formula unit equals two. As all of the elements check, the equation is balanced. Some things to remember. Chemists use chemical equations to represent chemical reactions. They show the chemical formulas for the reactants on the left and the products on the right. The coefficients of the chemical equation indicate the ratios in which chemical reactants combine and products are formed. They refer to ratios of numbers, but not masses. Atoms aren't destroyed or created in chemical reactions. Hence, the number of atoms of each type of element on the reactant side must balance their numbers on the product side. 